Well, it's just like helping just right. Spherical coordinates. Guys, make your voice really deep. Tonight, today we're going to talk about spherical coordinates. <laughs> I don't hear a difference. <laughs> um, okay, today let's talk about very useful, very, wait, wait, see, very useful. Actually, English made my voice lower. In Russian, it's my higher, much higher. But English uses these muscles here, so voice changes if you speak different language. For you oh, to know. I feel that, yeah, because when I speak no, in Spanish, my right? voice is higher. Just, yes. Поэтому давайте начнем урок. Сегодня мы говорим о сферических координатах. You know? That's a lot higher. So, yes, my Russian is much higher. So, look at this joke. It's not only useful, but it's very useful. Right? And then, uh, I never seen this before, but Dr. Payam likes the... Uh, uh, nice jokes how to memorize things and these three are actually pretty good because you will get confused between rho, theta. Do you say it phi or phi? Phi. See, there's not a coincidence, there's two versions. In Europe and Asia we say phi, p, c, not pi, p. In America it's the only country that decided to change it to pi, phi and psi. We're not going to do psi in this class but psi looks like this. And there's also k psi like that. There's also a letter like that. So if you take upper level classes, you'll be introduced to this, this, and this. Yeah, we're already doing those already. Right? Two out of the three. Yeah. So uh, you can call it both phi and phi, but I will call it phi since we're in America. But you see, he, he does it spherical because in Europe it is phi. So rho will be now radius, not r anymore. Write it down. Uh, theta will be an angle like before, but now it will be one of two angles. The theta angle will be horizontal. That's true, it will be horizontal angle. And then phi, which is phi, is vertical. So it's gonna be vertical. I don't know, it's a good joke because it will be a challenge to memorize. So any joke helps, to be honest. Thank you for laughing. This is how it looks like. Something that we did right now with the cylindrical coordinates. The difference will be interesting. For cylindrical coordinates, we decided to say that... Do you see my pen? I don't know. Uh, surrounding is my phi from 0 to 2 pi in this case. This distance is z. Oh, distance up is z. Distance from the origin is r. Now we're going to change that. We decided to get rid of z and in, instead use the angle to describe the same thing. So, it's going to be looking, so sketch this graph, this is important. Just like what I showed you right now in the animation, this is the point. We need to learn how to describe it differently now. Instead of using Z, Z is how high this point is, let's use the triangle. The triangle it's creating, it's going to be a right triangle, blah, 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 and the formula will give us new ways to describe it. And we're going to teach you in a second what are the new ways. So now you need to remember new ways to describing it. Instead of R, we have rho. This is my radius. And now R is still a distance away from the origin. But in cylindrical, it was over here on the floor in the plane. Now it's in 3D. R became a rho. Rho is three-dimensional distance away from the origin. The second angle, theta. Theta is, how did he say horizontal? What was the joke? Horizontal. Horizontal because it is on the floor. How far away this point is, how big angle this point makes with x-axis. That is theta. On the floor. That's, it's not an official way to code, of course, on the floor. While phi is in 3D, phi is not on the floor. And that's going to be the hardest part to explain you. Phi will introduce the angle that this point, this line, makes in 3D with Z coordinate. Let's figure this out. So rho and phi are in 3D while theta is in 2D. Here's the picture from the book I found, what I was just explaining, but it's the same thing, so just nicer picture. And then also one more thing he's mentioning, 
row has a horizontal line inside, so it's horizontal, and phi has a vertical line, so it's vertical. And that's actually pretty cool. I like this idea of memorization. Horizontal, vertical. Pretty cool. Is that the reason for the uh, They were chosen, usually, that's a good question, phi, psi, and theta are chosen for angles, so they chose it in order to represent this thing. But yeah, uh, just we like using it for angles. Now, yeah. Oh, mnemonic thing? So, rho, distance from zero to the point, theta, angle between, so this one, as you can see, in 2D, that's important. Theta is in 2D, while rho, I'll do like the, here, 3D, and phi is 3D. Phi is the angle between uh, the point and Z axis, while rho is the distance from zero to the point. One angle describes the rotation in 2D, like a shadow rotation. Imagine, imagine this is, uh, how do you call it, sand clock or sun clock? Uh, sundial. Sundial, right? So this is your sun dial. It looks like the stick, right? And then uh, what kind of shadow it makes on the floor tells you, oh, it's 12.05 PM, right? So exactly theta idea is the shadow on the floor while everything else is in 3D. How long is this line? And what's the angle with the Z coordinate? Restrictions or constraints. Rho should not be negative. It's a radius after all. Theta is always comes from zero to two pi unless there are any restrictions. But phi actually goes not to 2 pi. Phi goes from 0 to pi. It's a little bit hard to imagine why. The reason for the last one is because we cannot go more south than the south pole. From the picture, phi is not going the whole uh, thing like so. It's only going, it's a, it only can go upper part of z. That is from 0 to pi because you cannot go more south than the south pole. That's an interesting way to explain. The property we had before, x squared plus y squared equals r squared, now is going to be x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals not r, rho squared. We have that new property. We're going to be using that quite a lot. This is very handy, much more popular than uh, cylindrical ones, to be honest used more popular just like in cylindrical it is useful because a lot of familiar object can be written elegantly in terms of spherical coordinates let's practice i'm skipping the points and i'm going immediately to some lines and stuff what is rho equals three very interesting uh, what is your imagination before i go to math think about it rho is radius only radius is fixed to be three everything else can be flipping around the shadow on the floor goes around, and then the z goes from zero, the phi goes from zero to pi. So if everything is keep rotating, but the radius is fixed, what is that? A sphere. So your imagination should kind of give you a hint. If you don't have good imagination, and now you felt jealous that other did, <coughs> uh, maybe write down that rho is x squared plus y squared plus z squared inside of the square root. It's from this property, right? That is my row, a square root of all these guys. So that is going to be three. Well, now if you square, it will be x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals nine. And now you're supposed to know that it is a sphere. What sphere centered at zero radius three? Looking good. A sphere. Make sense? So look how fast. Rho equals 3. Who cares about x squared, y squared plus uh, z squared? Too much writing. Rho equals 3, done. What if I fix the angle instead? What if... Oh. I don't have it here. Okay, fine. Example 2. What if I fix theta? So one of the angles is fixed. Everything else is free. So again, if I just give you this, that means everything else is, can be anything you want. Rho, but not negative though. Rho can be from 0 to infinity. Phi is from 0 to pi. So phi is keep going like this, like this kind of pendulum, right? 
and then rho can go to plus infinity forever. So something is going away from the origin forever, all directions from uh, this kind of place. The only thing that's fixed is theta. Theta is the angle on the floor is fixed and the angle is pi over three. So it's like here on the floor. What do you think it is? A plane. Is it a plane? Is it? Uh, no, it is a Superman, a bird. It is a plane, looks like that. Yes. It's half plane, half plane. That's is going through 60 degrees pi over three or 60 degrees. It doesn't go to the left. So radius, as you can see, can be anything, right? Radius goes to infinity from zero and then phi is over here so from zero to pi but theta is on the floor here is my x here is my y on the floor theta is fixed to be pi over three so it has to be a plane with this angle that's the idea how elegant we just described the whole plane remember we're supposed to find normal vector describe the plane or recently we learned gradient and then we have this this i j k uh, thing to describe the plane now look at this theta is pi over three done and that's why we're using it one more three guess what is going to happen if i fixed phi this is the notation of phi this is a book notation and actually uh, russian has this letter in Russian, uh, this is f. So I can say when we when the cat is approaching to kick your glass out of the edge, we say f, f, f. and that's like the f letter. Go away, shoo, shoo. Yeah, f. Uh, and then this small. How do you say wolf again? Gov. Wolf is gov. Gov, gov. 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 Yes. No, but the, uh, what is your rabbit saying? Uh, not rabbit, uh, the frog. Rabbit, rabbit. That is a weird word, rabbit. We say qua, 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 qua. It's qua. No, it's like this, qua, qua. <laughs> anyway, the small phi looks like this. The small phi is going up, making a loop and up, like so. What is phi? So you see, in Russian we will say, in here we will say phi equals p over six. And then Americans decided to do it phi equals pi over six. What do you think this means? If radius can go as much as you want, the one at the bottom goes the whole circle around. How did you get so fast? Good job, you see it's a cone. How do we know? Because, the round around theta is the whole circle. It's not fixed, so it can be do whatever it wants. Radius can go as far as you want, everywhere, small or big. The only thing it's fixed is phi. Phi is fixed to be pi over six. So I will draw a nice looking cone. The full circle at the floor, but this line is fixed. This line, the direct the angle with z axis is pi over six i would do like this pi over six and this phi thing will be the hardest thing in your homework somehow the brain is really fast figuring out the floor because it's x and y we got used to it radius is very straightforward but phi the imagination of phi is hard so don't get discouraged if you're stuck with this it's not straightforward at all the lower cone uh, will be different, uh, so it's pretty interesting that you can always describe the other one. If you want to have this one, then this one, phi, will be fixed to 5 pi over 6, which is 150 degrees instead, if you want the bottom one. So it's pretty cool. So the whole derivation of the spherical coordinates, how they were derived using the triangle, as you can imagine, and then there will be radius. We used z coordinate from the um cylindrical coordinates and then the formulas show up okay let's do it like we're not gonna derive you can watch it later if you want in the video but the spherical coordinates formulas are formulas behold this will be uh, your challenge to memorize 
I did memorize, so I think you can do it too, because I always say my memory is actually not very good. X equals rho sine of phi cosine of theta. That's just x axis. Y axis is rho, so just like r sine, r cosine, but now uh, x is still r cosine, as you can see. Just times sine is additional. Y will be still rho times sine. Uh, that's kind of the same we had in spherical, r cosine, r sine. But this sine phi showed up extra. Finally, z used to be z. Z used to be height, but now we're using a right triangle to express z in terms of the angles. Using Pythagorean's theorem, as always, z will be the shortest one. Rho, cosine, phi. Either you understand how it was derived from the triangle or you memorize it. So, mnemonically, mnemonically, you're using right triangle if you want. So, let me show you, I guess, the triangle at least, so maybe you have chances to make it easier. Just a second, let me do this. The triangle, this is the point you try to describe. This is your R from cylindrical, this is your Z from cylindrical. And now we have new thing added. R, we now instead of R at uh, the floor, we have this radius which is called rho. See the difference? R used to be the radius in 2D. Rho is the radius in 3D, the distance from the origin on the spherical rotation. Phi is this angle. So these formulas are coming from this triangle. If you calculate what cosine, cosine phi is z over rho, and then sine phi is r over rho. And then using Sokator gives you z equals the formula. So from here, exactly z becomes this. At least memorize that. And then r is also sine times rho. And that's why it shows up in each x and y, and so on. So. It's not straightforward, I would say. Let's learn how to figure things out. Let's see why spherical coordinates are so awesome. They are literally the bazooka of math. <laughs> they allow us to simplify complicated integrals like crazy, exclamation mark. But that's true, even I know that, that's uh, spherical are popular. They are used to describe spheres and cones. Spheres and cones. If you work with cylinders, something you lo looks like a cube, Cylindrical shapes, we do use cylindrical coordinates. Everything which is spherical, like a sphere or a cone, we use spherical coordinates, that's true. In general, Cartesian coordinates are messy. That's why we don't really use them so much. So, let's do integrals, your favorite part. Integrals. Let's describe the volume of a ball, example one. Volume of a ball of radius r. So we know that it is, now we know, from the previous class, we know, solution, that is a triple integral of one dx dy dz over e. That is the formula for the volume of a ball with radius e where E is a ball of radius R. Uh, a very good question last time people asked me. I wanted to point out that it was a smart question. How do we know which order is here? Because now we know order matters. And then someone actually guessed, and this is the answer. If you don't know specifically what is happening below the integrals, each integral, and you just put E or whatever, D domain, then you just randomly put it the way you like it. For example, alphabetically, dx, dy, dz. 
because you just say, okay, we don't know the order yet, so let's call it E and put any order. But when you start describing each integral from zero to three, x squared and stuff like that, then order matters. So it's very interesting. It's international notation, people agreed on that. So I wonder if I have a ball here. Nope, okay, fine. Let's draw a ball. Let's do a beautiful circle and then add the volume, a center, this is your uh, ball of radius R. So now instead of R being this radius, now we actually saying, well, it's in 3D. So we introducing rho as the radius in 3D. That is a difference. I will be reminding you this all the time. Instead of saying I am away from this table on the floor, how I am away and tall away from the floor. So it will get a height. That's rho. The rotation over here around is theta. And then the rotation vertically, let's put it in blue, vertically is phi. So it is a useful way to describe a ball is to use um, spherical coordinates. Restrictions, though, we need to figure out what is happening. Step one, we have a picture. So we, let me write down. This is, the solution starts with the phrase, we know. We know that in Cartesian coordinates, triple integral dx dy dz of one is exactly what they ask us to find. Now we will convert from Cartesian to spherical. And that's what we're going to be on your exam. They will ask you to convert from spherical to Cartesian, from Cartesian to cylindrical, from cylindrical to spherical. So I remember it was like that two years ago on the exam. Step two, what are my inequalities or restrictions on angles? So, and rho. Rho is between what and what? Theta is between what and what? Phi is between what and what? Remember, phi is the one that has restriction in general to be from zero to pi. And now it may be different. So just make sure you remember that. In general, theta is from zero to two pi. And then this one is from zero to a number. In this case, it's exactly like that. It will be theta is rotating the full circle from zero to two pi. Phi is rotating its own full circle, which is half from zero to two pi. R is not going to infinity. It is fixed, starts from zero and adds at capital R. Because that was the, qu the question at the beginning. Radius is known, it's capital R. Finally, your last step is to build a new integral. Integral over of over e of the function f x y z. Well, in this case, it's one, but it's a general case. Dx dy dz will be. Okay, this will take more space, so maybe put it down. Integral over e. F now depends on new three variables. Radius rho, let me zoom in. So angle theta on the floor and angle phi on the z side. New variable shows up and that, remember it was, just let me finish. Um, remember it was r dr d theta. Now it's gonna get more complicated. It will be r rho squared sine phi, that's the new part which is always going to be there. d rho, d theta, d phi. Put this in the box. This is a formula. Uh, it's not connected to this example. This is general formula. It's a formula how to convert from Cartesian to polar. So a rectangular, rect rectangular coordinates to polar for triple integrals. Remember, a rho squared sine phi is their part of the formula, d rho, d theta, d phi. Yes. Does the sphere always have to be at the origin or will it be possible to... Oh yeah, shifts are possible. Shifts are actually easy, very good question. Shifts are easy to model if the origin is over here, then you just model it is from here, it will be x minus five and like y minus five. And it's like a 
typical vertical horizontal shift from calculus one. But good point. And that's why we always try to move it back. We perform U substitution by putting it back to the origin and then changing a little bit the limits of integration with U substitution. That's why U substitution is taught everywhere because it helps also to move things around. So this is formula, remember this will be important. Using this formula, we're gonna finish the example. So in this, in this example, we are working, everything is the same, but f is one. dx, dy, dz over e becomes integral, integral, integral. See the order. Well, first let's put what's inside. One is inside, that was given. Rho squared sine phi is part of the formula. This is in the formula. If you want to see how it was derived, watch the movie, video or read the book. Uh, it's not very hard derivation, but again, it's coming from the, the uh, right triangle. Rho squared sine. It was rho times rho and then sine. Yeah, you had a question, Erman. Uh, why would the, um, the sine be always from 0 to 5? Wouldn't that really give us like, the semisphere? Yeah, good question. Let me finish and I'll go back to this exam uh, question. I know it's confusing. Now, see the order. Let me do it in colors this time. First, we have d rho. That is radius. Order matters here, unless all the numbers, then you can make different order. d rho. Rho is from 0 to r. That's how much the radius changes in 3D. Next color will be d theta. So these two actually are spherical coordinates we had before. That is not new. Radius and theta are the same. Theta completes the full rotation for this example. The new thing is uh, d phi. And phi is only from 0 to pi. Now you need to integrate this. You see, it was 1 inside of the formula, but we still end up to have rho square sine. Luckily, all integrals have numbers at zeros of integrate at limits of integration. So we can break this into two integrals if you want to. One integral is from 0 to pi. The outside integral always have numbers, if you remember. So phi will always have this last angle you need to find. The hardest one, to be honest. From 0 to pi, do you see any function with respect to phi? Phi. I'm trying to dig out the phi stuff. Sine. Sine. The only function is sine phi. So it's going to be one integral multiplied. Remember, you can break into products if the limits of integrations and numbers. Second integral, d theta. Theta is from 0 to 2 pi, d theta. Do you see any theta? One. One, good job. And now last integral will be integral from 0 to r, d what? Raw. Raw. Did you say raw? <laughs> That's funny. Do you see any raw in the integral? Yes, raw. Raw like squared. So raw is a circle with a nice wiggly part, but as you can see, I'm doing it like this. Both are fine. Calculate each partial integration. What? Yeah, we can check it out. Integral of sine is what? Minus cosine. People are shocked. I think it's just a, a shock happening right now. Integral of sine is minus cosine from 0 to pi times integral of 1 is just theta. Theta multiplied by theta plug in 2 pi minus 0. That's just 2 pi. And the last integral rho square gives you rho cube over 3 bar from 0 to r. So it's just r cube over 3. Calculate and you will get, guess what? Such an unusual result. What is the volume of the sphere? Four thirds pi r cubed. We know this formula actually. If you remember related rates, I'm teaching them right now, my class related rates. The balloon is inhaling. Calculate how fast the radius is changing with respect to volume. That is the formula we give you. This is a known formula for the volume of the sphere. So as you can see, it's matched. Which means uh, you should feel happy we did not do a mistake. 
this is one of the ways to calculate the volume so let me just make a point here i guess i can take it from the notes i can see he's doing a good job explaining and i will answer the question was asked so this piece what does the rho square sine phi comes from S roughly speaking yeah it's a good explanation Roughly speaking, before we used to have R D R D theta, that was, we got used to it. But now we have one more radius adding up, which is rho. But it's the same idea, just in 2D or 3D. So rho times, rho times R just uh, made R rho squared. And sine comes from the angle, the 3D angle, like so. Let me put it here. I kind of like it copy and paste nice so here is the idea where this is uh, coming from draw this new notation a row square sign it's kind of we used to have r d r but r is the new radius row multiplied by the sign from the right triangle here is my r no, my R was at the bottom. My row is over here. So they have correlation with respect to the angle phi. This is phi. And sine through the right triangle, blah, blah, blah. Radius times radius gave you row square and then sine pop out. That's the idea. If you want more geometric explanation, please see the optional appendix at the end or you watch the video. We have videos at ASU and so on. Well, there's appendix at the end, I guess. So there was a question about phi. Let's go back and check it out. What is happening with phi again? Why phi is from 0 to pi? Why this last restriction is not from 0 to 2 pi? The idea is we can't go more south than the south pole. So let's see like that. To complete the whole rotation, let's see. To complete the whole rotation, oh, they're making it completely the opposite here. Oh, that's interesting. I should fix that, not to make confusion. Interesting. Um, okay, then I'll use this one. Theta completes the whole rotation on the floor from 0 to 2 pi. Radius is how far I, the fly in the air is from the apple, right? So the apple and the fly is here. That is radius in 3D. We did not used to have this before. So the fly can fly to, from 0 to 2 pi with respect to the floor, but when it comes to the vertical angle, it will not go below the table. Maybe that's how you should see it. It only can go from here to here. So if you're talking about a ball, and if the origin is like in the center, then you can go... That's a good question. If, say, apple is in the air, right? fly you think fly can go also uh, all the way around then you will over describe the circle this part was already described all around radius is already filling in all around uh here so you only need to f add up the height from zero to pi to make the whole sphere be done you don't need to go the full circle one more time because the at this circle is already did that the circle on the floor rotated from 0 to 2 pi. So we don't need to have uh, this rotation one more time from 0 to 2 pi. More better explanation? Uh, well, I was just asking, wouldn't the, the, the phi be from the positive z axis to the negative z axis? Since you're saying since the angle is being described from the axis. Yeah, yeah. This is, I would say, definitely maybe this is better to explain what just happened. This maybe is the better way to explain it from this idea. The definition of phi makes the restriction. Is the angle between the point and z-axis. Z-axis. So... And z-axis. What, what if your point is at a negative z? How would you... What, was, what would be the angle then? Hmm... Wouldn't you need a negative angle for that? I mean, not negative angle, like, for, for Let me show you this way. From, like, the axis, then you start going increasing all the way down to phi, but it wouldn't, it wouldn't necessarily be uh, negative. Like, 
Oh, is it, is it like this or? You should imagine the cone. I think cone helps to imagine it. Like so. Cone phi equals pi over 6 fixes this angle with z. This is pi over 6 from the right direction. And this is pi over 6 from the left direction. We don't go to the negative. To have the negative part, you don't have to go minus phi. You can just do 5 pi over 6, which is still from 0 to pi. That is why uh, we don't do it. It's going to be like so then. So if I do 5 pi over 6, it will be here and here, 5 pi over 6. And that's why it's oh, yeah. enough to be from 0 to pi. Yeah, no, I think cone explains it the best. Yeah. Sphere confuses you because it goes up and down. Cone, like I mentioned to you, it is enough that we have the full rotation on the floor. That is why we don't need the full rotation of phi anymore. Make sense? Yeah. It's a hard thing to understand. That's a good question. Yeah. So is it going, so theta is going like that, but then the phi is going like this? Like the phi is going... Yeah. Like up and down, right? Yeah. Like this. But then theta is going like up Yeah, the theta is on the floor spinning around. Okay. On the floor. Phi is... Okay. Yes, yes, exactly. Okay, I think it's getting... It should sink in, yes. A good question, guys. That's not... That's not obvious at all. Here, you see? So phi is the angle with z from 0 to pi. Yeah. Yeah, but even if you have a negative z, you can still describe it from... With a bigger... Yeah, yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Nice. Good job. So let's finish one more example in 10 minutes, and it should be fine. So your job is to rememorize the hardcore formula. But other than that, you know... Other than that, it only gets hard because of the imagination. And that's why these questions are good. Imagination here matters. Example, now it's finally going to be a hardcore example. So calculate the following integral. We have z equals a square root of x squared plus y squared. We have z equals... 4 minus x squared minus y squared. And E is the region above the first z and below the first z, the second z. E is between, well, it's above and below, it's fine, between. Calculate the triple integral. Fine, triple integral over z, this E. The function inside is just a four-dimensional function. Remember that. doesn't matter what is there. You will just have to struggle when you start integrating. But before integrating, you have to figure out how to convert this integral to doable limits of integration. So you first need to figure out what are we working with. Solution. If you don't remember, square each function. Let's do a quote. One and two. Function number one is z squared equals x squared plus y squared. That is a cone in 3D. Uh, yes, a cone in 3D. Then the other one, do you know what's the other one, number two? Z squared is 4 minus x squared plus minus y squared. Oh, that is sphere with a radius 2 because it's x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 4. That is a sphere. So we're looking at the very typical example which we had before. That is a sphere, we did it before. There is a sphere with the radius 4, like so. Uh, pay attention that z has to be positive or zero in both cases, so we don't need negative part of the sphere. So it's not only hemisphere. Z should go only up. And then there is an ice cream shape of the bottom cone. cone yeah, cone shape is inscribed here and cutting this object. So we need to find this. Basically, they're asking us about this. This is my E. Let's call it E. Well, let's use different color. Here it is. We did this before with different coordinates. Now let's do it again. So instead of describing it with z, x, and y, now we're switching everything into theta, phi, and r. 
let's see how it works again all of this can be moved into the center of the coordinates so it is zero here and x y z which we don't even have to write down anymore what is obvious this by the definition okay i'm zoom zooming in this by the definition let me choose color here this is called row this will be row comma second one is theta theta is the full rotation in this case it's full rotation theta is the rotation around theta comma and finally the rotation happening between this point and z axis is phi phi and now our job is to see how far do they go so rho is 2 because the radius of the sphere is 2 phi very interesting to figure out what phi is doing theta i think is the obvious one so let's see step one make a picture step two inequalities or restrictions since we have z equals okay definitely it's glitching let me restart it close start what do you think phi is from the picture what is your guess phi phi so theta what do you think theta is Zero to two pi. The full rotation on the floor creates the whole uh, ice cream cone. What do you think r is? Not r. Rho. From zero to two, phi is the complicated one, and it's always going to be. So let's see how to figure that out. Z is a square root of x squared plus x. No, it didn't make it better. Surprisingly, x squared plus y squared equals r. But now we know how to convert all of these. Rho, rho, cosine, oh, come on. I just said it equal to r. Oh, x squared plus y squared is r squared. Oh. It's always there. So even if it's not in this chapter, this inequality is always happening. x squared plus y squared is r squared with a square root. Uh, I can put it like so. Yeah. Like so. Okay, I already can see that my tablet wants the class to be done, to be honest. So let me do it this way. <laughs> I will give you the answer that phi is pi over 4. You think about it, and then on Friday we will prove it. Phi has pi over 4 <laughs> upper limit. And then we're going to continue next time because I can see my tablet is just not happy for some reason. Overheating it. Ah, yes. Friday we have a quiz, and don't be postponing, don't postpone your homework, please. Post questions in the forum.